This is Eugene Panrikovich of the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. To, today we have a Toshiba Satellite E305 laptop computer with a broken screen, and we're going to show you how to replace a broken screen on a Toshiba E305. Okay, before we do anything, we want to make the laptop safe to work on. In order to do that, we need to remove the battery. So we flip the laptop over. There's two levers on both sides of the battery. We slide both of them out, and then we pull the battery out, like so. And we put the battery to the side, and now the laptop is safe to work on. And while we're still on the bottom, I'll show you where the part number, model number for this laptop is. It's right here under the Toshiba. It's a satellite E305. Okay, when we flip the laptop over, the first thing we need to do is remove the screen bezel. And in order to remove the screen bezel, there's two screws that we need to remove that are hiding behind some plastic covers. So let's get started and let's go over the tools that we're going to need. We're going to need an electronics screwdriver with a PH1 bit. PH stands for Phillips, 1 stands for the size. Just in case, we also have a smaller PH0 bit. We have an exacto knife with a pointed blade to remove the rubber are the plastic screw covers and we have a pair of metal tweezers to remove screws that are stuck. Okay, so first thing we need to do is remove the plastic covers and we use the X-Acto knife to do that. Okay, and once we do that, I like to put them right next to the screw so we don't lose them. Same thing on the other side, like so. Okay, and then we use our PH1 to remove the two screws at the bottom. One and two. And when I do this, for each step, for each step, I put, I make a separate pile of screws so that when I put the laptop back together, I don't lose them. Okay, once we do that, we can snap off the screen bezel. And the way I like to do that is put my fingertips or fingernails on the screen side and gently start lifting up the bezel and listen for snapping sounds. So, so far, I don't hear anything, but we keep going. And we should hear something soon. Okay. Um, the uh, screen side didn't work, so what we're going to try is use our fingernails to go on the outside and snap it off like that, and that seems to be working. This is a pair of thin bezels, so... Okay, and once we start snapping off, what I do is I push back and I lift it up. So this one's a little bit harder. But if we do that if we push back and use our fingernails on the outside, it starts to come off. And on the bottom, what I do is use my fingertips and just run my fingertips along the bottom and should get it off. Okay, at this point, the only thing that's holding the screen bezel is the hinge covers. And what I like to do for that is use my metal tweezers to lift up the hinge covers. And almost got it. And that's one. And we do the same thing on this. And it's removed. This one was a little bit harder than most to remove. So Try different things. Try on the inside, try with your fingernails or like a butter spreading knife on the outside and just take your time 
and work it out. Eventually it'll come out and hopefully you won't break the bezel, but you shouldn't, it's pretty tough plastic. Okay, now that we removed the bezel, we take a look at the screen. The screen is mounted on metal mounting brackets on the side, and the screws that are mounting the screen are on the side of the screen, so we have to get to those screws, and in order to get to those screws, we need to move the metal mounting brackets forward from the back of the screen assembly. And the way we do that is we remove the screws that are holding the top of the metal mounting brackets to the back of the screen assembly. So there's two. That's the first trick. We try to pull the screen forward. Okay. And when we pull the screen forward, we can get to the top screws on the side of the screen, but not the bottom screws down here. So I have a second trick to do that. I loosen the screws that are holding the metal mounting bracket and the hinge assembly to the back of the screen. I don't take them out all the way. I just loosen them enough to tilt the screen forward. Okay, so just enough to reach this screw. So, and that should be enough. Let's take a look on this side, and that should be enough here. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is remove the two screws on the side that are holding the screen. Okay, we we'll start with the bottom. We have just enough room to reach the screw at the bottom. Let's see close up. One. And the top one is not too bad. Two. When you're doing this, make sure you have the screen assembly facing, leaning back a little bit, so when you loosen all the screws, the screen just doesn't fall forward on you. You potentially damage some things. Okay, and the last screw. And make sure you're holding the screen when you're doing the last three of the screw because otherwise when the screen falls back the screw is going to jump out. Okay, right away we see that there's a video cable that's adhered to the back of the screen. So we put our finger on the video cable next to the connector and so we will flip the screen to remove the video cable connection. And then there's a second adhesive down here and we remove that, and that, that gives us enough room to tilt the screen forward. Okay, so now we have that, we have to remove the connector, LED connector, screen connector that's connecting the screen to the video cable. In order to do that, there's some adhesive tape on the top that we have to lift up, like so. And sometimes there's adhesive on the back of the video cable, but not this time. Okay, once the adhesive tape is lifted up, we pull the connector back and lift it off, and the screen is free. All right, before we go any further, I'm going to show you how to reconnect it again, because that's the biggest source of mistakes that I see. So when you reconnect the connector, make sure you feel two clicking sounds. You won't hear them, but you'll feel them. And let's get a close-up of the connection. Again, try to get a good focus. Okay, pause the video right there. The connection is supposed to look something like this. The two sides of the connector are flush with each other. The seam, there's no gap in the seam between the two sides of the connection. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so let's take the connector back off again. and take a look at the screen. This is a standard 14-inch LED screen with the connector on the bottom left. So this one is not that hard to find, and it's a very standard screen. So the part number you need to look for is B140XW01. B140XW01. 
And most likely when you do receive your screen, it will not be in the exact same part number because there's five or six different makers that make the exact same screen. You can also buy the screen from us, from Screen Surgeons, and what you get with us is free email technical support when you do the installation, and also we have a compatibility guarantee. If the screen we send you is not correct, we will send you the right screen at no charge, and we'll make it right for you. To buy a screen from us, go to ScreenSurgeons.com, www.ScreenSurgeons.com, Click on Buy a Screen at the bottom, and then there will be a short form for you to fill out where you give us the laptop model number and the email address, and we'll get back to you promptly with a link to buy the right screen online. Okay, so when we do receive the screen, connect it as I showed you, put the, put the screws in on the side of the screen, mount the screen, and then make sure you tighten these screws on the bottom. If you don't tighten them, you may damage the hinges later on. Put the two screws in at the top, and then snap on the screen bezel, and put the two screws on the screen bezel and the screw covers, and you should be good to go. And that's it. And once again, my name is Eugene Penrickovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you, and good luck.